so in this in this lesson, uh, what we're interested in is coming up with or deriving a formula for what's called the reduction of order technique. Um, so general, okay, the idea will work as um, the idea works this way. So what we want to do is we want to come up with a technique to solve a second order differential equation, provided that we at least know one of the solutions. And so if it's right, so if it's second order, we have one solution, then we should be able to find a second solution. And the key to this method is that both of the solutions have to be literally independent of each other. Okay. Right? Um, so let's let's start with the derivation here. Okay. So suppose that y1, okay, denotes a non-trivial solution. So we're interested, so since we're specifically looking at a homogeneous differential equation, um, by the way, so every homogeneous differential equation always has the trivial solution, namely zero, right? So we're not interested in that. We want, uh, we we're not interested in a trivial solution. We want to be non-trivial, okay? So we're letting this be the non-trivial solution of this second order differential equation. I'm gonna go ahead and label this as one. Okay, so second order, right? Um, second order linear homogeneous differential equation, right? So each of these, and this should be, let's see, should be a two. Okay. So each of these, right, coefficients are dependent on your independent variable, in this case, x, okay? In fact, that's what makes this linear, okay? Or that's one of the conditions, okay? And we also know that y1 is a, is a solution. So the question is, right, how can we find, right, given a non-trivial solution, how can we find a second solution, okay, where those two solutions are nearly independent of each other? And once we have that, then we can take what's called a linear combination of, of those two solutions, okay? All right, so that's the question. Okay. We want to find a second solution of this of this different of the second order differential equation such that y one and y two are literally independent of each other. Okay, specifically on some interval. Okay, so again, that interval has to do with what's called the domain of the solution, which is uh, discussed earlier in the textbook. All right, so the way we do this. So last time, remember, uh, we talked about the fact that if you take the ratio of two linearly dependent functions, right, whether it's, doesn't matter the order, okay, um, you end up, right, you're going to end up with a, uh, a constant value, okay? All right. So in this case, since we want nearly independence, then the ratio of these two um, is going to be non-constant, okay? All right. Okay, so. If y1 and y2, are literally independent. Okay. 
Okay. Then then y two over y one is not constant. Again, on some particular interval. Okay. So this implies. That if you right, if you take this ratio, and if you divide them, the fact that they're literally independent is going to leave us with a function in terms of the independent variable. So let's call that u of x. Okay. And obviously, algebraically, right? This is just y two equals to y one times u of x. All right, so, so here's the secret ingredient, if you will, right? So what we can do is we can take this expression, right? And substitute back into here, go through some mathematics, right? And then we can figure out what this is. And once we got that, then we have our second solution, right? Okay, so let's write that out. Okay, so the function u of x can be found by substituting y2 of x. Okay, in fact, I'll just go ahead and not put the argument since we understand that these are uh, these solutions are. Uh, dependent on the independent variable of x. So y2 is going to be equal to u, and I'll say it this way, u of x times y1. Okay. okay. Now, in some books, um, they actually they actually do it this way. Um, they'll give you a specific differential equation here, and um, they'll substitute this in, and then from there get the solution. So let's why not come up with a formula, okay? Um, and that way, once we come up with it, once we derive a formula for this, then we can use it for you know whatever problem we have, okay? So a lot of these methods that we're going to be looking at um, rely on this idea. Where historic, so from a historical standpoint, um, we, you know, there are some initial conditions, right? Some initial settings, and so they come up with a kind of a uh, starting point, and they plug that into the differential equation, and then and then from there come out with a solution. Okay, so so it's, so this kind of der derivation is very common uh, throughout differential equations. Okay, so we are I mean, where you're starting with some assumptions and then substituting back in. Um, and so, so you'll notice this throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole course when it comes to deriving these uh, techniques. Okay. All right. So let's see. By the way, though, this so the formula that we end up with is going to be what's called a reduction of order. So the idea, right? The idea is that we come up with uh, we come up with this. Okay. All right. And then once we have that, okay, what's going to happen? When we substitute this back into here. Um, it turns out that this is going to turn into a first order differential equation, and then we can use a first a first order uh, DE technique to solve that. Okay, to solve to find the general formula. Okay, all right. So I'll just uh, write. I'll just write that here. What I just said.
Okay, so not only is it first order, but it but it's linear. Okay, just going to work out really nicely. Right, let's start the derivation process here. All right, so let's see. So let's start with, right, we start with this here. Okay, what we want to do, obviously, is we want to put this into standard form. Basically, we want to do what's called normalizing. So we're going to divide everything by a sub two, okay? And again, I'm not going to, I'm going to drop off the X values here. Uh, we understand that those are functions of X, okay? Okay, so basically just writing this in normal, writing sort of standard, putting in standard form, or in other words, what we like to say is normalizing. Okay, so now, what we have here is that we have y double prime plus, let's call this, uh, in my notes, I'm calling this P and this is Q. That's typically the letters that they use in a lot of these textbooks, okay? So this is gonna be P of X times Y prime plus Q of X equals Y. Okay. All right, so this is P of X. And this is Q of X. Okay. And we're also assuming here that um, that P and Q are continuous. And that's one of the requirements here. So they're continuous on that interval, on that uh, on their uh, domain. Okay. All right. Okay. So from here, we're going to take this. We're going to take this expression and substitute to here. All right, so, so I'm gonna let y be equal to u of x times y1 of x, okay? So in order to do that, we need to obviously, we need the first derivative and the second derivative. So we have a product here of two functions that are dependent on x, so we need to use the product rule, right? Okay, so let's do that. So you know, y prime, okay? Uh, so you're gonna have u, right, times y1 prime, okay, plus y1 times u prime of, u prime of x. So again, I'll just omit the, the arguments here, okay? Just to save on some space. Right, so nothing more than just applying the product rule here, okay? And so then we also need, right? We need the second derivative. All right, so we're gonna end up getting u times y1 double prime plus y1 prime times u prime, okay? So we apply this product rule here. Now we apply the product rule for this term, okay? So y1 times u double prime plus, so y1 times u double prime plus, this is gonna be uh, y1 prime times u prime. Okay, or I can write it this way if you want, just to be consistent. 
Again, the order doesn't really matter here. Okay. All right. So, all right. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So it looks like we have two of these. Okay. And this is one here. So we have two. Let's see. I have two y one prime plus y one u double prime. All right, so now we have the expressions for y prime and y double prime. Okay. All right, so let's substitute these in. Okay. We're going to substitute into here. Let's call this two. All right, looks, it's going to be, you know, a little bit, a little bit of work, but eventually it's going to get, we're going to uh, eventually get down to a first order linear differential equation, which is, again, really nice to work with. All right, so substituting these in, okay. All right, so we're going to have U on double prime. All right, so there's the first one. And then the second, we're going to have P times Y1 prime, or times Y prime, which is here. And then we have Q times Y. Okay. All right, so just in case, Right, just, in, uh, just to clarify this, again, we substitute, we took this, substitute to here, right? That's just y double prime. Right? And then we have this. Okay. And that's going to get multiplied by p. And then we have this third term. Okay. All right. So let's see. And y, yep. So again, I can go ahead and simplify this. y is just u times y1. So let's take care of that here. Right, so u, so q times u times y. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. So. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, what we can do is rearrange these terms here. Okay. Let's go ahead and. I can go ahead and factor out, so I can go ahead and factor out u here, okay? So I have a u here, okay? And I have a u here and a u here. So let's, so first let's go ahead and distribute the p value for the, this p. And so then, right, notice that what we're going to do is we're going to collect terms here. So we're going to collect all the u terms, all the u prime terms, and then all the u double prime terms. So there's a u here. Uh, there's another one here, and there's another one here. Okay, so we're going to end up getting y1. So y1 double prime plus u, so p times y1 prime plus q u, or q times y1. Okay. 
Okay. All right, everything looks okay. And that should be Y1, that should be one five here. Okay. And then Q times Y1. All right, so now let's take out, uh, let's look at the terms that have U prime in. Okay, so we have this one. Uh, we have one over here. Okay, and that's it. Okay. All right, and then finally we get to the term with we we're, we're left with uh, u double prime. Okay. All right. Okay, so you may want to pause the video here and think about this. What does this, right? What is this going to be equal to this term here? And, right? And I give you a hint, it's over here somewhere, right? So you may want to pause and think about that. That's something in my face to face class. This is something I give, you know, I let them think about it. And, okay, so think about it, right? Okay, so as you probably figured out, this is going to be zero because that was based on our assumption, right? Okay, so this is just right. We're assuming that in our in our assumption, we assume that y one was a solution, okay, to this form to this uh, second order differential equation. So therefore, when you substitute back in to the differential equation, this has to be has to be satisfied, right? So this has to be zero, okay. This is all zero. Okay. All right. So, so this is what we have left. Okay, so basically this part. All right. All right. So, what we're going to do here is remember the goal is to figure out what u is. And, okay. So, we have a second order difference. We have basically a second order differential equation in terms of u here. All right. Let's, so, let's carry on over here. So what we're going to do to solve this, okay, we're going to let, we'll let W be equal to U prime. Okay, so W is equal to U prime. So that would mean that we get, okay, we're going to have Y1 W prime. Right, since W is equal to U prime, so that would mean this would have to be W prime plus 2Y1 plus PY1, or this is what, 2Y prime, 2Y1 prime uh, plus PY1 times W. Okay, so now because of doing the substitution, this is now linear. Um, in terms of W, right? Okay, so we can go ahead and use, uh, we can go ahead and solve this um, using that uh, integrating factor idea.
By the way, this integrating factor, right? This is the one for the linear case. That is not the same um, as the integrating factor that's used for exact differential equations, okay? Um, there's a little bit of different idea there, okay? Just to keep that in mind. So, so this is the one where, right, you can uh, basically put normalize this, and then from there, you, you figure out the integrating factor and then um, solve from there. All right, so let's go ahead and normalize this. Okay, divide everything by y1. So putting again, putting it to standard form. And then we can go ahead and figure out the calculator integrating factor. So we're going to take e to the integral of this is going to be. 2y1 prime plus py1 divided by y1. And remember, these are uh, functions of x, or independent variable. All right, so let's do, let's do the side work here. Let's figure out what this is. Let's do that here. All right, so what we can do again, so we have right, we have this situation, we have this form. So what we can do is split this up. Okay. Let's say two y one prime divided by y one dx plus the integral of p y so p y one over y one. Let's just leave us p. Okay. And here. We have basically y1 prime over y1, okay? y1, remember, depends on x. So technically, this is going to be two times natural log of y1. Remember, these are functions of x, okay? And so you're basically letting u, right, if you're using the composition rule for integration, which is nothing more than the chain rule. I like to call it the composition rule because that's really what it is. In fact, that's how I teach it to my counseling students. But you let u be y1, right? And then therefore you get, you know, du is going to be y1 prime. So, um, so we have this result, okay? So, so the integral of, of one over u is just natural one. Okay, um, and, and we, put every, we put this in absolute value just because, just keep in mind, we're working with real values here, real value functions. Okay. All right, so, and then the other part is just going to be p of x. All right, and we can, well, p of x, actually, sorry. So we should keep this in the form. It's gonna be p times x, but we'll keep it there because something, um, so yeah, so just kind of here, we're gonna keep, we don't know exactly what p is, remember. So p is a function of x, so I really, so I can't say like p times x. So we have to see, we have to keep it in this form. Just a minor technicality there, okay? All right, so we'll keep that in that form. Remember, we're trying to derive a general uh, formula so that we can apply it. All right, so that is all going to go into here. So all this is going to go into here. Okay, so our integrating factor, right, is just e to this.
And again, P is a continuous function in terms of X. All right. All right, so remember that using this technique, we take that integrating factor and then multiply it on both sides. So we end up getting this. Okay, so we have W prime plus So this multiply by this term. Okay, and all right, so the purpose of this, remember, so the purpose of this is to, of this integrate factor is to, um, is to basically leave us with something where that we can undo, right, we can undo that expression using the product rule. So going, using the product rule reverse, okay, right, so working, right, so working on those details, right, it turns out that this, all of this is going to be the integral of this derivative. It's not too hard to see that you end up with this um, because you have e here. When you take the you take apply the different you know the derivative here, you get e to this times the derivative of this, which is what you get here. Okay, and then you have w here. Okay, so you need you need a w here to get w and w prime. So it's not too it's not terribly difficult uh, to see where that's coming from. In fact, that's a good exercise um, to. Uh, you know, to take the derivative and see if you end up getting this, okay? Okay, um, so just kind of, again, just using, right? We're just basically reversing the product rule. So, so sometimes I like, I like to give these type of problems my count one class. So we're so used to taking, you know, we're given a product of two functions, taking the derivative, right? But what about going the opposite way? So, I, you know, I like to expose that kind of problem to them because a lot of them will be taking different and this is also used in other courses as well. But anyway, uh, this is the result we need. Okay. All right, so let's see where are we at here. Make sure my notation is all good. All right. So then this is right. So obviously, then using the using part of the fundamental uh, fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, this is going to right, you have the integral operator and the differential operator, those cancel out. Okay. That's going to leave us with this. And when we take, oh, we have to take the integral of zero here. Sorry. So we take, right, we, we take the integral, okay, we get the derivative, and then we have to take the integral of both sides. All right, so we end up getting here, we take the integral of zero, which is gonna leave us with um, a constant. So I'll call that C1. Okay, so the rest is just kind of uh, using a little bit of algebra here. Um, this is the same as WE.
I can move this to into there, right? Just using the properties of, of log, in this case, using in this case the natural log, which works the same. And then times uh, e to the integral dx. So again, I'll just omit the x here for p, since we understand that it's a function of x <coughs> equals to c1. Okay, let's see. So then this becomes right e to the natural log y1 squared. That's just y1 squared. So we get w times y1 squared. Okay. All right, and then we have times this. Okay. And so then from there, okay. Uh, we get W equals to, right, this is going to be C1 times E to the integral of P. So we divide, right, we're dividing by this. So this becomes negative, And then this, I can put, I can put Y1 squared in the denominator, okay? And since, so now, so since uh, we said that W was equal to U1, prime, then we can, and remember, we're trying to get, we're trying to get u, okay? So we can substitute, in here, we can substitute u prime. Get some space here. I wrote p of x here just again, just I mean, just to indicate that that's a function of x here. Okay, so to get u, right? So we have u prime. So obviously, to get u, we just take the integral of both sides. So, so taking the integral of both sides, we end up getting this. Taking the integral with respect to x. And I guess I should put the x here. I should put my differential there. That's, that's kind of understood. Okay. All right. So let's see what we have now. Okay. And then obviously, okay. So obviously, yeah, we're going to have another constant here. So let's call that c2. Because we're taking the integral of both sides. So that's going to introduce a new integration constant. All right. So and so one point here. So whenever you're doing these type of problems, like or these type, of, whether it's a problem like uh, or a derivation, you should always, you know, make sure that you, you know, try, use try to distinguish your constants. Right here, I use C one. Okay. If I use uh, C here, and if I use if I use a C here, then it's kind of uh, misleading. Okay. So it's always good practice to you know to to use this to make sure their constants are distinguished, okay? All right. It's just a good habit to get into at this level, okay? All right. Um, so in that case, remember, we want, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to come up with the fundamental solution. In other words, the general, the, the general, the overall, the general solution, right? Based on our, you know, based on uh, Y1, Right, and we can find y two. So, what we can do is uh, we can let c one. Okay, we can let c one and c two. We can let c one be one and c two be zero. Okay. 
So you'll notice this a lot in, in particularly in this, um, in differential equations and even in higher level math courses, even engineering courses, they'll do this kind of thing where they'll come up with a general, a very general solution in terms of constants. And then what they'll do, they'll say, okay, we want the most, we want the fundamental solution. So the fundamental one, right, is by letting, is to let C1 be one, and C2 be zero. Now you could technically let C1 and C2 be anything, it will work, but we want the simplest form, okay? So that was the, right, so that is uh, the reason behind this, okay? All right, so U is going to be the integral of E minus the integral of P divided by Y1 squared. Remember, y one is the is basically the one of the solutions or the second order. Okay. All right. And so, going back, remember, um, going back to our assumption, we said that right. We said that y two equal to u u of x times y1. So let's so let's write this way. Okay? So we found, right? We found u and we have y1. So y2 to get the second to get the second solution, we just take y1 and multiply it by the integral of this. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can move this over a little bit more so you can see that. So there's the formula that we want, okay? This is what's called the reduction of order formula, okay? So, okay. so again, if we're given, right, if you're given a second order differential equation, um, if you, and you're given one of the solutions, then we can substitute into there and then get y2, right? And then, um, the solution, right? The overall, the general solution would be this. <coughs> okay, specifically if this, right? If we're assuming that this is homogeneous, okay? Um, this would be y equals to to C1 times Y1 plus C2 times Y2. So you're given one of the solutions and then you can and then find the second solution and then take what's called a linear combination. Because remember Y1 and Y2, they form a basis, what's called a basis for this, uh, for the overall solution, okay? Um, if you've taken, if any of you, I know some of you have already taken linear algebra, so it's the same idea, here, right? Here, as is, as it is in linear algebra, so you're basically you can come up with a general solution by taking the linear combination. In fact, remember that these are nearly independent of each other, and not only that, they span the solution set. So those are the two requirements to form a basis. And I believe they they do they talk a little bit about this in, in the textbook. Okay. All right. 
Okay. So Y1 and Y2 are the fundamental solutions. Okay. Or sometimes again, they sometimes they use they use the word fundamental. Uh, and this is the same thing as basis. Okay. okay. So all right, let's look at an example of, of applying this. So again, you don't need to. You know, given a problem, you don't need to go through all this again. Okay, um, we have a formula that works there. Okay, so this is one of those forms. You're gonna in this particular section, right? In this particular, um, in the next few weeks, we're gonna be going a lot. Of, we're gonna go through a lot of derivations, so you're gonna end up getting a bunch of formulas. Okay, so this is just one formula, right? For a second order, um, you can. There is, uh, if you have like a third order, there is a way to. There is a way to uh, come up with a formula for that situation, but then you would need you would need two solutions, right? Because you're working with third order. Okay. But this is fine for now, right? This is what we need. Okay. Let's see. All right. So I want to do a I want to go over a specific example of applying this rule. Okay. Let's see. Where's my get my eraser here. Okay, what I'm going to do is just kind of write the formula over here so that we can apply it. Okay, so let's look at a example here. Okay, so we're given x squared, right, is a solution. Of this second order differential equation. And we want to find the solution of this D. Specifically, the general right, solution. Okay, so this is a perfect example, right? Where you're given one of the solutions and or one of the solutions to this second order, and you want to find the general solution. Okay, so we can use the reduction of order to find that second solution. Okay, so let's do that. So the first thing to do is to, you know, is to um, normalize this, okay? So, okay, we're going to put in standard form. Okay. All right, so oh, I have x squared there. So obviously that just becomes y double prime. And then plus, this is going to be two over x, y prime minus six over x squared y. And this is going to be equal to zero. Okay. So it's in, it's in standard form. Now, okay, so we can uh, go ahead and apply our formula. Remember, this is P. Okay. And so. Okay, so let's 
so we have y1. Okay, so y1 is just x squared times the times the integral e to the minus integral of two over x. Right, and then uh, divided by by one squared. So that's just sorry, uh, x squared to the power two is just x. Squared. Okay. All right, so do a little bit of side work here. I'm sure, I'm sure all of you know what the integral of this is. Okay, so you get two times the natural log x. And then you have a minus there, so we can rewrite this as get x squared times the integral of e. There's a minus here, so we have minus two times natural log x over x to the fourth. Okay, this is just natural log. When you put this in here, that's just gonna be one over x squared. So obviously e to the natural log one over x squared because e and natural log are, in, are basically inverse functions of each other. Um, so that's gonna leave us with one over x squared there. Okay. So we get one over x squared divided by x to the fourth. Uh, so that's going to leave us with x to the minus six, right? Or that's the same as one over x to the six. So we're going to rewrite. So, <coughs> so we're going to have x squared times the integral of x to the minus six dx. Okay. All right, that one is pretty easy to evaluate, right? Just using the power rule. Right, so we end up getting x squared times x to the minus five over minus five. And again, you don't have to put the c here because we assumed in our derivation that it's gonna be zero. We want the simplest form possible, okay? All right, um, so this is going to be, all right, this is just minus one fifth x to the negative third. Okay, so I'm just cleaning it, kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Okay. All right, so here's another thing that the um, that sometimes students don't really understand. Well, they, oh, unless it's, they understand after it's explained to them. But um, so we have this form, right? So this is basically, this was y2. Okay, so we have y2 is this. Okay. All right, so however, remember we want the fundamental solution. So what we have here, right, a minus one fifth is just a, okay, it's just a constant, okay? So when we put this back into, or when we formulate the general solution, we end up getting this, okay? Remember we have, right? that gives us our general solution. So we have y equals to c1 times x squared plus c2 times negative one fifth, okay, x to the minus three. Okay. So we have, so base, remember, this is just a family of solution curves, right? Okay. So we can reduce this even more, okay? Um, this, becomes another constant. So it, so in a way it can get absorbed into, let's say C2, okay? So we end up getting this. So 
So that's the kind of the bare bone uh, uh, solution that we get. Okay, so this is, again, so this is the most general form. Okay, it, so this solution is in here. All right, so it's, it gives, remember, it's, this is just a family of solution curves. Okay, the, all right. The general solution. Okay. Again, these are your fundamental set. Right, each of those functions is a fundamental set of solutions. Okay. So again, that forms the basis for that general solution. And all right, and you can also verify uh, because these are right because of the in the derivation we required y1 and y2 to be linearly independent. So you can actually take the Rodskian of these two and, uh, and verify that, it, that they are linearly independent. So let's, let's do that as a quick check. All right, so using the Rodskian. Remember, we have two functions, so we're going to create a two by two matrix from this. We have x squared and x to the minus three. So we take successive derivatives, in this case, uh, first derivative, right? Because the first row is for the functions and then the second one's for the, uh, for the first order derivatives. So we have two X here, okay? And this will be minus three X to negative four. Okay. All right, so this is a two by two matrix, right? So the determinant will be the product of this minus the product of these two. Take the product, this one minus product of this, two okay. x times x to the minus three. All right, so this is going to give us uh, minus three x to the negative two, minus two x to the minus two, and then that gives that gives us minus x, sorry, minus five x to the negative five. And uh, remember that this is right for this to be, or since this is not equal to zero for all X, that means these are literally independent for all X. And 
And I'll just abbreviate that here. Okay. All right. So we already knew that in the beginning because obviously the um, based on the derivation, but again, it's just a good exercise to do that here. It's a good review from last time. Hi, Maxwell, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Professor? Yes, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good and I'm following this pretty well. Okay, good, good. Did you have any questions? Um, I missed the first part where you derived the reduction of order formula, but I think I'm just gonna go rewatch that at the beginning. Okay, and it's also in my notes, yeah. Okay, great. So, but this is the primary, this is the important part because we already derived it. And so to do those problems that ask you for this, uh, to do this technique, you just apply this. So you have, but the thing is you have to be given one of the solutions. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, I think it will just help me understand it a little bit better if I understand how we, how we get to that point. Okay. Uh, all right, so it's okay? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right, all right, so yeah. Uh, okay. All right, so yeah, so this, again, this is the reduction of order method, okay? Um, it's used for second order. If you have a second, if you try to solve a second order differential equation, uh, provided that you get, more, provided that you have at least one of the solutions, okay? And the other, so the other solution will, will be literally independent of each other. All right. So the question is, what if you're not given, right? What if you're not given the, uh, solution, or at least, right? If you're not given one of the solutions, then what do you do? Well, um, it, requ it requires another kind of uh, technique and that we'll be looking at, uh, we'll look at that on Tuesday, okay? So this is where we start to get into um, the different forms, right? You have just focusing on second order, uh, you get what's called the characteristic equation. And then based on the type of solutions, um, you, that will give us the type of solution or the type of technique to apply to, you know, to get our, um, you know, to get the solution for that differential equation. So we'll look at that. Uh, we will look at that next time. Okay. All right. All right. So. So yeah, so that'll be next week. Uh, next week, we'll discuss that. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to, we'll, like I said, we'll start to look at uh, techniques for general for a general second order differential equation, namely a homogeneous second order. And then later we'll consider what happens if it's not homogeneous. All right, so there you have to use what's called trial functions. Uh, but in any case, you have to solve for the homogeneous part first, and then, <coughs> excuse me, and then solve for the non-homogeneous part, and then sort of combine these, combine the solutions together. All right, so I'll go ahead and unless you have any questions, I'm going to stop here, okay? And then we'll carry on next week, yeah? Okay, thank you, Professor. Sure, I will send this one out, and the previous one, I will send that out also, okay? Okay, great. Have a nice you too, thank you.